Hello, hello everyone. Hello again. So, um, I'm going to continue this. I don't have a plan for now. Um, but we'll start with belts, I think. Belts is a, a nice starting point. And then maybe we'll start mounting some of the electronics. So, hello Joe, hello Tegan, hello Michael, Nick Nick, and uh, Galio. So, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at something that I got sent by Funzor. Um, some know this, some, most of you don't actually. Uh, Funzor is making some rook parts out of CNC aluminum. Um, aluminum. And hello, Lennar. Um, and yeah, they sent me this to put on this printer. Um, they also make a, a Rook Mark 1, so non 2020 top gantry, these two pieces. They also make a aluminium bed frame. And of course this one, and they make the, um, the actual bed. They have a D0 bed that they just branded um, to a Rook bed. And all of those links should be down in in the description. I've put up some affiliate links for Funzor, um, so you can get these for yourself. And why should you get this? Well, I'll do a video comparing this to the original um, printed one. I'm expecting my input shaping to be better, um, so I should be able to print faster. Hopefully. So yeah, I'm I'm going to grab some belts from my stash, and we'll start running some belts around. So I was looking for my belt clips. Um, so you could use uh, zip ties for attaching your belts and that works. That's what, what I've been doing for a long time. Uh, but uh, Kyle from our Discord, he made these when we launched, right before we launched Rook Mark 1, I think. And they're just little clips that, that just slips onto your belts instead of zip ties. And they just make it so much easier to put your belts on. So yeah. I'll open up my roll of belts. Let's put that away. So what I like to do is uh, I like to pre-measure roughly my belt length and then start attaching it. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll start here and I'll give myself a little bit extra. Start there. This go belt goes around through the motor all the way around through there, there, and back here. So that's my measurement. 
So I'll cut that. I'll see you in a couple of hours, Galio. That's my first belt. So let's see how that fits. I'll try to to make it actually on this time. And if it does, I'll take it off and I'll make another one because they are identical. Both of these are identical. And I may have to take my, yeah, I have to take my front idlers off. So that's not an issue. From screwdriver. Even I can't route these belts correctly. Now that's pretty good. That is pretty much what I want. I have a little bit of extra so that I won't have it too short. So I'll take this back off and I'll find a measurement. I could probably remove 10 millimeters off of that, but I won't. So that's 125. So 120 per belt is probably a good starting point. So I'll make another one. Attach this to the first one, and I'm going to do two. The main reason is because um, I can, and the other reason is that I'm going for high speeds on this printer, so I want this to be extra tight. Hey Tarnaji, how are you doing? So I'll attach this one first. So that's the first one attached. And I'll attach the second one. Let me get rid of this. There we go. The, uh, the belts are attached to one end. And now I'll put that on with just one screw first, just to get it started. So, no need 
to tighten that, just make sure that it's on. And I can start rowing my belts. So I'm going to do this with the top down view so you can see a little, a little bit, bit better, better what I'm doing. doing. So, so I've started, started here, here and I'm, I'm doing, doing the top, top belt. belt. So, so that, that goes to this, this first, first idler, idler right, right here. here. And, and then, then um, I'll take, take my, my idler, idler block, block off. off. I'll just take, take off both because I don't need to do, do that. that. I'll, I'll run, run my belt through. through. Like so. so. And, and this, this is the top belt, belt and this is the top, top motor. So I'll do through there. there. Around the motor, and I did it completely wrong. I need to flip my belts. And again, again even I, I do. Errors. My voice is doubled. Um. Yeah, one of my cameras were uh, had turned off the on their microphone. Sorry about that. Just because I lost my train of thought. Let's do this again, shall we? Okay, let me, um, yeah, there should be just one mic. Um, I think when I switch to my other camera, that camera's turned up on its mic, so it uh, should be gone now. I'll just attach that quickly. So let's do the belts again, shall we? So I'll grab, I'll grab two belts. And I'll pull that through. Yes, teeth out on carriage. I just forgot. Even I make mistakes. So here's a little tip. When you're doing these with the clips, you it could be hard to get the clip on both at the same time. So make one just a few teeth shorter. So you can do one first and then the other. And I, once again, I forgot to put on the second one. All your printed parts, PLA or some other. Um, this is all PLA. Uh, we designed this printer to do all PLA. The only exception exception that I have on PLA that if you're using a heated bed, it might be a good idea to do uh, ABS, ASA, or something like uh, carbon fiber PETG because that will hold up to the temperature that you're going to have on your bed. So a carbon fiber PETG bed frame would still only be good for um, still only be good for PLA printing because your bed is a maximum 160 degrees, sorry. And if you do ABS and ASA, then your uh, your bed should be fine. Um, I have my Mark One in my 
apartment in my living room, living room actually and it's a really nice setup for a ABS printer. I'm trying to do nylon on it for uh, small parts which should be possible. So yeah, PLA is just fine for the frame. It's actually the best uh, material for the frame because it's the most rigid, easy to print plastic that we have. Uh, there are stiffer plastics, but they are some more, somewhat more expensive and harder to print. Okay, so now we have laces out. Like Leonard said, or no, Carnegie. <clears throat> and I'll put that, just realized that this rail is, is crooked and I do not care. So just to inform you guys, I have more parts coming. So I'll have to take my both uh, all of my um, rails off uh, because I have new rails coming in from a sponsor so I'll be I'll be uh, putting on some fancy rails there we go so my first belt now goes see if I can get this where it's supposed to go okay so we started here and I'm just going to go through all the points that we're going through um, to get back around so it's from here through this one, through this one, that's upside down, that doesn't matter. That one, through the motor, that one, back around, to that one, and then to the belt cradle. <clears throat> Ace Ventura reference, yeah, I got it. I, I did get it. So now I'll grab two more of my clips and just thread it on to there. Okay, second belt is going to do the exact same thing but in the mirrored direction. So you could just thread it the other way but I'm threading both of these left to right. So this is also a good spot to see if you have your pulleys on right. This one should be the right side up and this one should be upside down. I'm just tightening the idler tensioning system and let's get this onto our belt cradle and once again for those of you did, who didn't get, catch it this is a Funzor CNC uh, belt cradle that they sent me to test and I'll be doing a video at some point after this is uh, done and printing I'll do a video comparing this CNC belt cradle to a normal printed one and if you want CNC parts for rooks there is some there are some links in the description to Funzor's Aliexpress site they only sell these on uh, the, their Aliexpress site So I 
I'm going to start getting these just finger tight. Like so this is this is okay. I'm just making sure that the belts hits they hit all the bearings, idler bearing bearings and pulleys that they were supposed to. And I'll tighten it a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. Tool head is not assembled. No, I'm going to do that on stream. I've purposely not pre-assembled anything for this. So um, I'm going through the same pain that you will, uh, but I can't blame anyone for bad design because it's my design. So I'm just pushing that clip on. Hey, Kuro Fox. Yeah, I can make a uh, belt routing diagram. That should be easy. Uh, but th it is exactly the same as a Voron V0. Uh, but this is even simpler because you don't have to go through that much stuff. Let's get this second one on. And there we go. So I'll try to run you through these, uh, all this belting stuff. So from, let's, let's start with the bottom belt, okay? The, from the belt cradle, we'll attach it to one of them, one of the sides. So the left side will go bottom left, goes to this idler right here, this screw and then it goes all the way around to that one all and that then to this one loops through the pulley on the motor to this one and then all the way back actually front to this pulley or not pulley no idler and this is the tensioning idler so you might have to unscrew that screw and take it off pull it through and put it back on to that bolt and back to the belt cradle the top belt is doing the exact same thing but mirrored so from top left it goes to that idler to this idler all the way down to that one motor idler 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 and belt cradle so it's it's quite simple once you just get it started because there's two different levels of belts and they only go on one way so this, this cannot go this way. What a way to compensate not having Legos at childhood. Yeah, this is a great way to compensate not having Legos at childhood. Uh, I did have Legos at childhood and I still do this, so. Okay, that's the, uh, the belts done. And I, I, I know my camera isn't good, but approximately same price range. Yes, but th these are tools, these are better. I'm not saying Legos are bad, but these are better. Um, so let's just put in uh, a couple of screws into that. belt gantry. I'm using M3 by 4. You can use M3 by 5 as well. Wrong screwdriver. Yeah, 
yeah, Legos are overpriced. Um, Galio, who's uh, normally in here, uh, she works uh, selling Legos, and even she knows that they are overpriced. So if anyone wants to know, that was 105 millimeters for the belts. 105 for each of the XY belts. So I'll put in some more screws. So I, I really want to do the Z axis and put all the belts on and the I want to put the bed and the gearing on but I don't have my AB tooth pulley yet so that'll have to wait what I am going to do is loosen up this guy I'm just trying to get my belt my gantry straight because it's it's a little bit crooked right now 105 centimeters yes 1050 millimeters that makes sense to you then That is moving. I'm not happy with how uh, crunchy my raw, uh, my rails are. So, but I did I did say that I'm getting some I'm getting some rails in um, from those guys. Those guys are sending me some rails. So I'm uh, I'm excited to t try those out because I've already tested the Fabrico uh, rails. And they're ex excellent, so I'm hoping that West Reed's uh, rails are just as good. Uh, the belt clip. Um, so I can't post anything in chat right now, but you should be able to search for Rook belt on printables. And they are just super simple. So Kyle made these, um, and I know Zombie Hedgehog is the one that had the the opportunity of testing them and um, giving feedback. Uh, so if anyone can post this in the chat, I would be grateful. Uh, why did it change from tension on the motor to the idler towers? Um, yeah, that's a quite a simple question, but a uh, a simple answer as well. When we tightened the motors on the Rook and the 2020 Mark One. Um, you had to undo these four bolts. So you had to undo, undo those four bolts and push the motor back to tension. And while it works, uh, getting the right tension is super hard because you have to pull the motor or you could use something like Saeed's uh, mod that uh, gives you a screw that pulls the motor. Um, but it also meant that we had to have the motor mounts bigger to accommodate for your sliding. Um, 
So this just simplifies it a little bit. And we don't no longer have long things protruding off, out the back of the printer. There's a nice clean middle section. Um, the belts are actually in line with the motors at the back. So there's nothing stopping you from putting in this against the wall. Uh, you might want to space it a little bit because of the belts, but <clears throat> yeah. Um, and tensioning it from the front by putting a screwdriver here and just doing that. It's so much easier. There we go, that's belts tensioned and assembled. So you can recycle PLA quite easily if you have an oven and a baking tray. So smash up your parts with a hammer, put your parts inside of a pillowcase, um, cut them up with a hammer and put them in the oven at 220, 230 Celsius and just leave it there and they should just float down to a sheet of PLA that you can use um, as panels. That would be really cool. Um, and you can just keep on melting and melting them down to um, flat panels basically. If you have silicone molds, you can melt PLA into silicone molds and create uh, PLA statues that are not 3D printed. Uh, I know there's a couple of YouTube channels on how to do it. Teaching Tech and uh, Make Anything, is that what he's called? They have both have videos on how they do it. It's quite simple. Um, I should do it. I have a couple of big bags full of PLA that I should do something with. Yeah, you shouldn't have to worry about PLA um, in your oven. PLA is a food safe material. Printed PLR, PLA parts may not be as food safe. I wouldn't use it in a large-scale kitchen, I would use it as single use. Uh, but yeah, PLA is 100% food safe. If you have plastic um, cutlery, uh, it's mostly illegal now, but um, if you can still get plastic cutlery, that's PLA. It's, it's pure PLA. So yeah, melting, melting PLA in your oven is completely fine. Maybe not Put your nose uh, in the uh, door when you open it because it's going to smell. But yeah, there shouldn't be any problems. Okay, we have um, belt tension. So uh, should we just start on the tool head? I'm kind of excited for the tool head. Uh, I want to wait with the uh, bottom until I get my Z axis in because it's going to be easier to film. Um, it will be easier to film to, yeah. So hopefully I'll get that last pulley that I need. I think that's the only piece that I don't have for this printer. I just got my fans in today. I have two, two GDS time focus, um, 24 volt uh, dual bar ball bearing uh, fans going in this. Um, and I will not do the stock 
uh, tool head. I have, well, the tool head is stock, but the cooler part of it, the part cooling part is not stock. That will be a um, CPAP setup with dual 5015s. I might do a bigger CPAP if I want to, and I want to, so I'm going to. Okay. I have forgotten to tighten a screw. I can see that my my gantry is not happy with me. I'll have to take that off anyways. I'll fix that off camera. Yeah, so yeah, again, the PLA is food safe and um, you don't have to worry about your oven for this. Uh, but yeah, like Tarniji says, ABS in your oven, melting it, uh, that's going to off gas. So that's a bad day. Um, I think you'll be having headaches for days after that. But PLA, completely fine. Okay, let's, uh, I'm going to dig through my parts. And here's my, my tool head. So let's put this aside. I'll find all the parts for this and I'll go through, uh, I'm, I'll go through all of this and where everything goes. So we're going to need uh, heat inserts for the tool head. So these are M3 by four by five. Next, I have my cooler. This is my part cooling part. Um, and this attaches to the tool head like that. Let's see. So that's my tool head. The bamboo hot end goes into the square hole. And yeah, that's my part cooling setup. And I'm also putting a micro probe into there. Harvesting heat inserts. That's a fun. That's a fun little project. So just excuse me. I'm going through my parts bin to find all the parts that I need. find my bamboo hot end there's one of them I think yep that's one of them <coughs> head is printed in PLA yes it is and I have no issues recommending you do that too the reason is uh, we have a part cooling fan on here uh, which I need to find have this guy right come on and um, this guy will cool down your heater and to this day I've never had an issue with a PLA uh, printed tool head on a PLA printer if you're doing high temp stuff PLA just doesn't work. So if you're doing an ABS printer, don't do PLA for your tool head. This will be set up for pure speed. So PLA is actually the better option. Uh, 
Um, and same for the 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 ducts. Uh, I have had a one rookery started to deform one of the ducts on one side, and that was me testing the the uh, tool head. I printed at two hundred and eighty with uh, ABS on a PLA tool head. So with just PLA printing, PLA parts are fine, except for the the bed. That if you're doing a heated bed, don't do this in PLA. I have done it. It can work, uh, but uh, you you'll have to um, level your bed every single time you're printing because the PLA starts to warp. PETG can be used for a tool head. I would not use PETG for my motor mounts and my idlers and my gantry. I wouldn't do PETG there. I know Prusa do, does PETG, but this is a different setup. There's a lot more tension on the belts. There's a lot more screws going into plastic. Um, so yeah, do either PLA for a PLA printer or do ABS, ASA or carbon fiber PETG. That's the three thing, the four things that I've tested and works. Thermal color change tool heads in PLA. Yeah. It would be cool just turning off your um, part cooling and just see what happens with uh, color changing PLA. Okay, so let's, um, let's start looking at what we're gonna do. Oops, I dropped it immediately. So the um, bamboo hot end is going one way or another into here. It's going in like so. That's a tight fit. Whoever designed these must have uh, had some really good tolerances, but yes. So that's my, my bamboo hot end. And the part cooling fan goes on those two, those two screws right there. So for, for the hot end, we're using two screws attached to two heat sets on the back. So we need to put those in. And we're also using uh, these two screws, which are M2.5s, not M3s. Uh, they go straight into the bamboo um, heatsink and it'll hold it secure. And I also made a hole for the wiring, which is that one. And let's see. <clears throat> so there's a tiny little hole. Oh. Right there, right next to the PTFE hole. There's a tiny little hole for the wires for the bamboo. And I'm not sure if this has been put together incorrectly, um, but the space for the heater, okay, yeah, the space for the heater does line up with this groove on the bamboo. If the bed is designed to be in PLA, do you need to scale it up? a bit when printing ABS. Uh, that is individually. Um, that is something that you have to, you'll have to test your printer. Um, maybe print the uh, three piece bed and measure and see how much your parts are shrinking. But in general, when you're printing ABS, you should have calibrated your slicer to um, help with shrinking. Uh, that was on the rookery. Hi, Chaz. Um, yeah, the Sentinel is th the same. I have a, uh, I've had a PLA Sentinel on my um, first 2020. That's still uh, the first generation 2020. And that same tool head was on my Mark 1. 
and it was fine. It was completely fine. You can use pet G for the bed, yes. Um, I would just keep in mind that pet G's, um, pet G starts to soften at 80 cents Celsius. And if you're doing pet G prints, that your bed will be at 80. So you might have some warping on your, um, where your screws attach to your um, bed gantry. So let's uh, let's start with some heat sets. I just need to remember all of them. So two there, two there, two there, two there, and one there. Okay. Remodel the belt holder for one piece print and print it in ABS. Yes, that's so. Yeah, if you're printing ABS, you should calibrate your your filament shrinking before you start printing all of this. <laughs> that petty roll is um, is going to get used. So let's get my um, horrible, horrible uh, heat set. Cool. I'll plug this in without turning off the computer. There we go. So I like to set this to like 300, 320. Um, I know some people say that you should set it to whatever melting temperature your PLA is, but um, you dry it for 48 hours. Yes. Um, if you have pet G laying around, you need to dry it. That That's true for PLA as well. You should dry it. Not everyone has to, it depends on where you are, but uh, knowing Kuro Fox, I think he has to dry everything. Okay, let's just grab a bunch of heat sets. Trusty tool. So here's a good test for you. Uh, if you're using heat sets on rook parts and you have the three by four by five, they should just fit into these holes perfectly. Um, they shouldn't fall out. They should fall out, but they should also not move because the hole is um, 0 0.05 bigger than the heat set. And if you haven't done this before, just remember do not put any tension or a strain on your heat set. Just let it go in by itself. Yeah, Kiro, I, I'm, I'm expecting that it's quite humid where you are. Did you get your um, frame drilled and tapped? Did you get it together? I haven't been on Discord for a few hours, sorry. It's been busy. So that's, that's the only two heat sets you need on this guy. So you need that one and that one. Now for the tool head, you need a couple more. 
So let's start with the two on top, these two guys right here. They are for your extruder. And this tool head only supports uh, Sherpa style uh, tool head attachment. So Sherpa Mini, um, HGX Lite. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of different tool heads. Uh, Sailfin has a optional base that gives it the, uh, sail f the uh, Sherpa mounting spacing. Okay, so that's uh, that's the two heat sets for the top. And I'll do there's three heat sets here. So these two hold and that hold. Uh, tapped and together, but I'm building with 300 for an underbuilder. Oh, that's cool. You're build, building a Mark II scalable, I'm guessing. should make some sort of solution for having power on my bench because that's the maximum reach of my iron right now. CUDA, rail Z, not rods. Well, scalable is rods. If that's what you're building. Or have you modded your own to fit a uh, ender bed? Hmm, let's see. That should be all of the heat sets for the tool head. So again, there's three in the back here. Let's see. So one, two, three, two, four, uh, uh, three and four. No, four and five. Counting is hard. Hey, Martin. And then the uh, the two on your um, part cooling. Uh, so if you're if you're building the stock setup, there will be a second part that attaches to here, and I just remembered I need to put heat sets in those as well, um, and that needs heat sets too. So it's two more than what I'm doing. That should be it, uh, but you never know, right?
Yeah, uh, Orbiter V2, I totally agree. It's my favorite too. I have one on my scalable that's right next to the camera. Um, I mean, I, I do like the HGX just because of the price uh, versus performance. It's a fantastically performing um, just single, you just purchase it and use it, there's no assembly. Same with the uh, Orbiter, it just works, but it's more expensive. I do like Sherpa and Sailfins as well, but they do require you to assemble and build it, unless you buy pre-made kits with um, printed parts. Uh, are all the heat sets needed for Rook Mark II the same size? Yes, they are all three M3 by four by five. Um, I was going to go with M3 by five by five, but M3 by four by five uh, makes it easier. Uh, they're shorter. The M M3 is the thread, and the four is the length, and the five is the width. So yeah, M3 by four by five on everything that needs a heat insert insert on the rook. Plastic rails are not forbidden. I love them. I have one over there in my office. My first serial was done on a rook with printed rails. So if you want to see something cool, that should be on my... I think it's still on my YouTube. But yeah, printed rails are um, a possibility. So next we're going to put together the hot end. So we're just making sure everything fits. So to be 100% honest, I've never put together a bamboo hot end before, but I have watched some other people do it. The latest being Zombie Hedgehog, I think. So, um, I mean, eh? so this should have come with the, the heater, but it didn't. Yeah, no heater, but I have another one. and thermistor I'm just going to cut off the ends of these we won't be using that um, bamboo plug anyways <laughs> yeah rookwood uh, printed rails are fun I'm going to put this back together and it will retain its original um, number 42 serial number. I was supposed to use all those parts on this but it ended up uh, getting some some great parts from our uh, sponsors and um, yeah so if anyone's new to the stream today I'm using a I'm using a belt cradle for the rook that has been CNC'd and it's the main reason why we kept that belt cradle for the rook uh, when I did the Mark II so that uh, this tool head attaches to there and there's there's um, if you have a printed version, it's one screw to get it off. It's behind there into this. If you have this CNC version, it's three screws. So it's the one on the back and then there's two at the top. So that's why the uh, tool head now have two holes right there. Yes, Buddha, this is the Funzor CNC uh, belt cradle. 
Uh, let me see if I can get you closer. Focus. But yeah, uh, I'll make a video. When this is done, I'll make a video on the performance of it compared to a printed one. So. didn't come with the clip. I'm guessing I'm gonna buy another bamboo hot end because this one didn't come with the clip or the heater or the thermistor. Oh well. And looking at these, so this is the other one that I have. So there's a, um, the printed one are in the STLs for the Mark II. Uh, but Kuro Fox, you should not need it. Um, I'll design a uh, tool head for you. <clears throat> so I'm just looking on these two uh, hot ends. They're both um clone bamboo hot ends but they're two different versions um dimensions are the same but this one has the uh, reinforcement I'm not sure if you can see it yeah this one has the reinforced part and this one does not so i'll just keep this in case i need it I don't think so, but I'll keep it. There's a spare nozzle in there. Idler towers. Um, if if Funzor gets enough sales of rook parts and we can convince them that rook parts are a good thing to keep manufacture, um. I'm, I'm just saying that this entire thing has been designed specifically for CNC. So all of the, these parts, I've already redesigned them to be CNC'd. So if anyone wants to CNC parts for this, I have those ready. Um, so yeah. I kept that as an option for, for this when I designed it. This should be CNC, uh, it could be fully CNC'd with some small alterations for the parts, but still look like a rook. Okay. So uh, I'm going to do something that I've never done before and put together this. Has anyone out there done this before? And can kind of let me know if I'm making mistakes. The thing that I'm mostly confused by is where the thermistor goes. Like there is a hole. Does it just go in that hole? Is that, is that correctly? Is it just hold on like that and then the clip kind of secures that? Smallest little hole, yes. So then I need to goop, to goop this. I'm just doing a dry fit right now. I'm learning, right? That's what I like to do. So that goes on there. Focus. Yep. And then this should slide on. Right. Small little hole, 
put the heater element and thermistor on, then slide on the clip. There's a color for it. Yeah, I saw that. Glass bead goes in hole. So I'll just I just need to put some thermal compound onto that thing. Take some force. Thank you. That that actually helps a lot. Um, I was a little worried about how much force to use. But if, if you're saying that it's going to take a little force, then I'll I'll use a little force. That's okay. So thermal grease. I know you shouldn't have to get this like spread out to make it to actually have it working, but I like to do that still, so. Thermistor hole two, get on some, some on there. Thank you for the reminder. Blob, thing go in hole. I'll probably just buy a couple more of these uh, hot ends. Um, I'm going to use the same thing on my Pegasus as well. That was probably a little bit too much thermal grease, but YOLO, right? Here, but things get slippery. But down on the top of the heater, then push the clip up all the way on the sides. Okay, so let's see. That is on there with some thermal gloop. And then I'll just get that clip on. Using my big brain, I'm seeing that the clip might be directional, so I think I have it. Sorry, I'm not doing this um, on camera. It's so hard to focus. I think that's it, right? Hello, Hendrik. Is that is that right? Did I do it first try, like perfectly? Because I do everything perfectly. I'm gonna just get some of this grease off my fingers. Uh, glass bed. This is not. That's done. Perfect. Uh, this is not going to have a glass bed. Uh, I'm using a uh, Voron V0 bed. That's what this has been designed to. Let me so I'm using this bed. Um, Voron V0 bed from AliExpress. This is the cheapest one that I could find with the cheapest 60 watt heater and it's Perfect. It's been printing for a long time. And the only thing that I didn't buy that was the cheapest was, was this thing. Uh, this is the, um, the Fice F Y S E T C. I call it Fice tech. Um, it's their PEI sheet with a carbon fiber side and that's real carbon fiber. It's not, not just a sticker. I'll see you later, Tarnji. Um, glass bead. Okay, yeah. The glass bead goes in a small hole. So, let's see if I can find something pointy. Uh, so, right behind here, right there, there's a hole. So, I just put some of that thermal grease in the hole and I shoved that glass bead in. And 
and yeah, I this is the first time that I'm doing anything with a bamboo hot end. I'm purposely doing everything for the first time on this. Um, so I haven't built a Mark II 2020 before, even though I designed it. This is going to be my first one. So I'm learning. I mean, I have an idea of how I put everything together, but the silicone sock will have a cutout. Put that cutout where the top of the heater wires are. Okay. Silicone sock, top of heater wires. Oh, that's, this is a uh, tight fit. Are these the same? I have two kits, so just checking. Yeah, these are the same. So I'm guessing it goes in sideways. Oh, this is, this is turning into a mess. Oh, well. Oh, there we are. Very tight fit. Yes, it is. Ta-da! Wow, that looks uh, almost professional. Okay, we have a, um, a hot end in. So I'll do the wiring later and I'll attach all of this to longer wires, but that is great. That is looking great. So what screws did I go for here? I honestly do not remember which screws I need to use right now, so. I'll grab my box and just start putting some in. It's not those. So is it M3 by 25? Uh, that would suck because I don't think I have more of those. But yeah, I think it's M3 by 25. Let's make some M3 by 25 real quick. are m3 by 3 yeah these are m3 by 30 let's see how long they are and I'll just cut them uh, that's actually um, a decent chance for me to show people how easy it is to cut screws because it's surprisingly easy just need one good snip tool and I think I have mine here somewhere. So I've been, I tried having some uh, music going in the background last stream. Not sure if I liked it, but if you guys want me to have music, uh, let me know and I'll, I'll see what I can do. I need to find some, some license, license free, um, music. Yeah, so that sticks out. That sticks out, so I need to cut that. But that's no issue. Just file your screws down. Yeah, that's that's one way of doing it. Um, I have a, a, a more direct route. No music. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of the um, if you want to put music on uh, you can put on whatever you want instead of me having to disturb you with music that you don't like. So I do agree with uh, no music. Yeah. I know some people, me included, likes to play games or, or do other other things while they uh, watch streams. So that might like impact your gameplay or whatever that you're doing. Let's see if I can... <clears throat> I need to go into my tool workshop. No, I don't. I have one specific plier that I like to use for cutting. 
No music. No music. Good. I ordered some insulation to line my mix hold with. Or else we will hold the pro and keep. Yeah, keep me updated on that, that Lex Holt. Um, for me, that's the perfect cabinet for it keep, because it's in my living room and it's just behind the sofa. No one can see it unless I actually ask one of my friends to look for my printer. She couldn't find it. Um, so give me a uh, little second and I'll go gra grab my um, pliers. And I'm back. So I have a, a good set of snipping wire, snipping s snips. Um, and when I walked out, I saw that I haven't had anything to drink. So cheers. This is an energy drink, by the way, if you didn't know. Don't accuse me of drinking alcohol because that shit is the, the devil. I don't like alcohol. Looks great in your room. Yeah, it's a more uh, elegant solution. And I'm betting that if you have a stock height rook, you could probably fit a filament spool um, over it. That was never my intention. I did think about having one laying down under it, but I never did that. I just have a filament drying box at the top. Uh, that's a little bit more elegant. Okay, so I'll just grab uh, that much ish. Uh, it's a uh, quarter past midnight. Yes, I have to stream late because you guys have weird time zones and all that stuff. Well, we have weird time zones, but you know. So, just some good quality uh, snips. Don't use these. Um, hold your screw, shut your eyes, and squeeze. That's it. That's a uh, five millimeter ish shorter screw. Yeah, me don't liking alcohol has nothing to do with Christianity. It, it's just, yeah, I don't like it. Just tastes like something went bad. So why drink it? Energy drinks are um, my go-to thing. Safety squint. Well, the thing is, there's nothing over there that I need to worry about, and I don't think it can hit me. So I'll just looking away so got him Or past midnight yeah well it's uh, 19 minutes past midnight for me and Galio so that's sticking up slightly I'll take off another two millimeters <laughs> it's four and up to time yeah it's it's I'm not sure what happened there it just changed like we we both have uh, daylight savings, so I'm not sure what happened. So if you're um, 
if you're building printers and you want to have that as a hobby or just you just like building things with 3d printed parts and using m3 screws get a good set of um these because you can cut an m3 easily with it and it actually makes uh better threads in plastic if you cut it like that so just a little tip so i'm gonna see if i can find some m2.5s i have some just not sure where actually they're there mm. hold on Time is irrelevant for me. I sleep when I want to sleep and I do what I want to do when I want to do it. That's kind of my, uh, my luxury, I guess. Let's see. Note to self, those holes can be bigger. Let's see if I can make it work. I might have to reprint. You broke three pliers. Um, get better pliers. But don't, don't use these guys. They are not meant for anything made of any metal basically <laughs> maybe i'll just make a small adjustment ah, it works So that's not going anywhere. So, so the hot end is now attached with two screws that goes all the way through. And it's attached with this one. I'll put in one more right there. Just find one. Cut it down slightly because they were a little bit too long. And I'll put it in. I might have to get the other screwdriver, but. Okay, tool head is mostly there. Let's get the, um, the fan on. Existing white connectors gets clipped off. Yes, you just clip off that entire um, stock connector and then we'll solder to these later on. OK, 
Okay, so now I want um, I have my fan and put that there. I'm just looking at orientation that works best with the wires. So that is probably the best. So I'll put it like this. That way I can just snake this around the back, uh, hiding it. And for this, let's use M3 by 16. I believe those are. Let me, let me double check for you guys. Yes, M3 by 16 goes in right there. And also I do, I do recommend putting the uh, hot end on here before you start extending your wires because that hole is tiny and there's not a lot, lot of room to make it bigger. Um, so yeah, so unless you do really tiny solderings, um, solder it after putting this together. Okay. Let's get the um, extruder and the motor. So I'm going all out for all the parts of that that I have on this. So I'm using a, um, let's see, I'm using this motor, uh, which is the Rohan 3D motor from Fabrico. This is the one that comes in the Fabrico kit. It's a great motor. Only reason I'm not using it on my other Rook is because I'm using the HGX. And yeah, I didn't feel like swapping motors. Let's get one more of these guys. That is Sherpa on. <clears throat> so next I need to get some PTFE to go between the Sherpa and the uh, hole for the hot end. Let's hope I have something. I found a piece. So I'll have this uh, all the way in down there. And I'll grab this. So what I like to do, and the easiest way for me to do this is because you want to have this at a fairly precise length, right? So I'll I'll hold it like that, and then measure. Sorry, uh, measure the distance between these, and then cut it. 
So what I'll do is I'll cut it first to something closer to what we need. And it's still about a millimeter off. So let's shave off one millimeter. Not right, not straight. That's straighter. And let's attach these screws. Okay, so that's our hot end, our tool head, almost fully assembled. Next, I'll do the um, the CPAP cooling, and that fits together super tight. Um, and if you have ever seen a bamboo tool head up close, this is um, very similar because it's um, almost a copy. <clears throat> and if you're interested in CPAP uh, for your Rook 2020 Mark II, this um, adapter is on printables. Um, if you go to my profile, uh, the, there's a link down in the description. You can get this uh, for your printers too. So for um, for normal people, leveling the rook is having an end stop at the bottom and you're, you're doing a three point leveling like normal. Um, I'm going fancy. Uh, what gear parts are you using for Sherpa? Um, so the this Sherpa specifically is um, the one that comes in the Fabrico kit. Fabrico have their own Sherpa kit uh, and I've printed the parts out of um, carbon fiber, fiber ABS myself. Um, so yeah, Fabrico Sherpa kit. Um, and I'm going to use a BQ uh, microprobe for this. Um, so because I'm, well, I like micro probes and I hate leveling and I hate um, all of that stuff. I just, I don't want to spend time on it. Uh, so I'm putting probes on every single printer that I have. My Mark One already has a micro probe and it works fantastically. So, you know, um, they're not that expensive. At least they're not for me. What is CPAP? So CPAP is, um, it's not what we're using it for. It's more of a term. Uh, CPAP is where you, on printers at least, it's where you have your uh, part cooling fans not on your tool head. So it's remote part cooling. So what I have is, I have this tool head and uh, there's a hole here that goes all the way down, splits into two and exits here. So instead of having your fan just being on the front, like the stock, the stock Mark II has a fan right here. It's a 5015 fan. Um, this has a uh, hose. Like this, that you put on to your tool head, and at the other end, I've made an adapter to, to put to. Uh, let's see, where are you guys? So 
you can put two uh, 50 15 fans on here, and um, that'll be your puck cooling. So it just removes some weight and it allows you to have bigger fans. Um, the uh, those two 5015s are not gonna stay on this printer. I have something better, um, but I'm still working on that part. <clears throat> okay, so I'll put the uh, micro probe in here. I specifically made a hole for it on this part, and it'll just show it slightly. So the way I did this is it's not the most compact, but it's pretty compact considering this is a complete tool head with auto bed leveling and CPAP. And yeah, I'm actually really happy with how this all came together because um, fitting the um, the microprobe in here with a stock setup with a 5015, it just isn't possible. Um, I would have had to use this space uh, for um, for cooling and then removing one of the ducts. That was my option to get a microprobe on here. But doing CPAP, it, it allowed me to have this attach here instead of like down here and then splitting splitting the fan ducts into two and have the microprobe right here. So the microprobe ends up there, but inside. So I'm attaching the cable for the microprobe, make sure it's secure, securely in there. And then just bending it slightly backwards. I did make a spot for the wiring. Um, here. Also, you could flip the micro probe around. There are there is a spot for your wiring to do that. Um, just means that you have to look at the uh, you have to look at that, and I don't like it. So I'm going to put it in like so. Let's grab one of these guys. And my handy dandy screwdriver. This doesn't have much torque, but it does save me a lot of work. So if you want to win, you can win one of these. It's not the exact same model, but they're, they're selling them with uh, different kits and they look slightly different, but they're all the same. Um, we're doing a uh, competition right now on the uh, Discord. So you can uh, win one of these and Rolohan will send it to you. And if you're a super fanboy, you can ask him to sign it. He'll probably do that. I know. I don't know. It's a little bit weird, but um, he'll send you one of these. Um, comes with 60 bits, I think. So it's a big kit. Um, it's, it's basically the same kit that I have. I have a bunch of um, bit sets down here. So if you see me reaching down here, that's what I'm reaching for. I have all my bits lined up down there. So microprobe is in and you can barely see it. Just how we like it. So the um, Triangle Labs BMG Extruder um, and the Bowden HDX lights, both of them work. 
uh, there's no difference in printed parts. There, the only difference is that if you're doing C, uh, if you're doing Bowden, um, you can use both. Um, you can use the HDX HGX light for Bowden if you want to. Um, you need the, a clip. So uh, at the top of this, there is a small clip to make it work with Bowden. Um, so if you want to do Bowden, uh, you need that little uh, clip that Triangle Lab sells. Uh, it's the same clip that they're using on their uh, hot end. Uh, most of their hot ends use that clip. Um, so yeah, the, the, um, the extruder and the hot end differences are not um, exclusive. You can mix and match between them. So there's two, two, hot, uh, two tool heads, one for the bamboo hot end, and then there's one for the Triangle Labs um, CHC CR10. So that's the one that comes in the Fabrico kit. It's, it's a great hot end, but we're moving on to um, the bamboo. It has a little bit more flow. Um, and we find it a little bit easier to um, make the tool head compact. And the fact that we can secure it at four points instead of just two points um, makes it easier and better for me. So if you want like the cheapest setup, get a bamboo clone. Try to get the ones that are version two or version three. To ha there, there has some. They have some reinforcements, and then get an HGX light. It's a great little extruder for the price, and that that way you have a direct drive tool head and the capability of printing TPU. So, but if you have a BMG, uh, yeah, you can use that, but. I was doing some looking at some some prices and the HDX light right right now you can get it for less than 20 bucks. Uh, I've seen it as low as 14 bucks on AliExpress and um, for 14 bucks you get a an, an extruder and a motor and the BMG itself is like 8 to 10 bucks and then you need a motor that's another eight to 10 bucks. So you end up at the same price and you'll get an, an extruder that can do both direct drive and Bowden. So I don't see why you should do BMG to be honest. Get a uh, cloned bamboo and get a HGX light. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm just looking at how all this fits together. It looks like it fits. I need to take the Sherpa off to mount it to the to the um, tool head clip or belt clip, sorry. So that's a simple, that's two screws. No big issue, except one of the screws are stuck. Yeah, it's HGX. Is it uh, spelt wrong in the um, bill of materials? I'll fix that if it is. Uh, we have a new uh, bill of materials. Um, it's it's on the Discord, but it's not been officially launched. I'm just waiting for Roland to to launch it. Basically, uh, it's there's a little bit more descriptions, um, a little bit more details and pictures of everything that you need. Okay. So yeah, so there's uh, two screw holes. Uh, there's two holes right there. That is for the belt clip at the top. So th the way you attach the tool head to the CNC version of the belt clip is that you put in two screws and then there's one in the back here. So let's look at screw lengths. We'll get a uh, 
And if you're building rooks, just get like a couple of these screw sets. I have two different ones. I got two different ones from the same seller. Um, mostly because this one um, doesn't have anything smaller than uh, six millimeters. And this one has uh, down to four millimeters. But yeah, this, this set is pretty much perfect. Get two of these if you're building a rook. Let's look at screw length. Yeah, I'll do 10 and three by 10. Yes. Well, that's looking cool. And I'll just attach my part pulling um, mostly because I just want to get everything on as quickly as possible. Okay. Just need to remember what I was thinking about wiring. Or did I even think about wiring? Did I even consider wiring for this? It's been like two months since I designed this, so be patient, please. Okay, so let's get the wire flat. So note to self, if I'm redoing this, I might put in some channels for the wiring maybe that might be a smart thing okay that's good let's get some I need more m3 by too long and if you haven't caught up to it this is not a stock tool head Oops, um, this is my CPAP tool head. So if you're building a stock setup, you won't have micro probe wires to, to care about. You'll have a 5015 on there instead, which should be more than enough for a rook. I've been completely fine with 4010s, so. That's one. That's not a good sound. <laughs> yep, that's our uh, tool head secured and then there's two more screws at the back there they are optional but why not just use them right so I have some m3 by let's see m3 by four probably I'll do five m3 by five And if you're if you like what I'm doing, um, and you want to see more of um, either live streams or, or YouTube videos, uh, hit the uh, the button right below the screen or the uh, the window for uh, that has a thumbs up on it. I'm not gonna say the word, but you know what it looks like, right? 
hit that button that lets me know that you like what I'm doing and yeah that, that'll encourage me to make more videos I have videos planned I have told myself that I'm I should publish every Monday um, for a while at least I'll try to publish every Monday it's mostly dependent on what I can do like the the parts that I'm able to get and if I have content, I won't just make content to make content. I want to make quality content. So if you, if you want me to keep making more, just hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, do that. Uh, but I, I, I'm just assuming that if you're here for a stream with me, just building a rook, then you're probably already subscribed. So yeah, if you can do that on the, the thing down there, that would be amazing. Let's see here. Okay. So I just need one more screw. And that's the one attaching the, uh, the back of that belt cradle to the uh, tool head. And that'll be our tool head done. Completely done. Let's see. Okay. Midlife chaos. Thank you. Yeah, I, I um, try to make videos that will make me interested in watching them. So, um, yeah. I'm trying to do some fun things. Uh, there's a reason why my scalable is not in its enclosure anymore. It's uh, right next to the camera. It's because I'm I'm going to make a video on it this weekend. So hopefully, if if I can get everything done, the uh, video will be up on Monday on something for the scalable. Um, and it's not something specifically to the scalable. It's applicable to everything within. 3D printing, um, design-wise, and just uh, working on your printer-wise. So yeah, that's that's the tool head. Let's put the uh, shirt off back on just for looks. I need to grab this back off because I'm doing the wiring and all that stuff next time, but or hopefully next time. Oops. I'll grab some screws. Uh, Mark II will be um, will be moving. Um, yeah, I've uh, I've been thinking about ways to make it move faster and all that stuff, and I'll try to make it move faster than the old one, which is going to be hard, but. Um, Let's just say that I have hardware that could do it better now. That last walking video was done with the cheapest of cheap parts that you can get. So uh, I have more parts coming in. Uh, I'll be um, putting on the uh, new rails that I mentioned. And I have new motors coming as well that will make this um, slightly overkill. But hey, that's uh, that's what we do this for, right? It's 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 supposed to be fun. Building printers is supposed to be fun. So if you're frustrated, do something else for a while. And I'm just seeing that uh, this might be too close right here, but. Uh, I'm putting an HGX here instead. So this is, the Sherpa is not staying on. I'm putting an HGX light on there and it's uh, slimmer. So. But I might have to change this part if you want to do Sherpa. Yeah, that video with uh, the walking rook. Yeah, that was, um, that was fun. That was just me goofing off when I realized that I could make my printer walk. 
I just said, you know what? Let's let's have fun. Um, Leonard, uh, a real undistorted video of 3D printer building with everything that goes with it, including drawing tools and parts. Um, yeah, that's coming. Um, I'm working on it. It does require a, um, a full printer, right? So I need all the parts, but I'm working on that uh, with the help of some sponsors. Uh, but yeah, that is that is coming. Uh, it's I'm going to do a, a full build tutorial, a um, like the one that I've already made for my rook. I want to do it again. I think I can make a better video, so I'll be doing a full rook mark one print video, and I'll also be doing a rook twenty twenty mark two build video. Um, what I'll what I'm going to do is I'm going to build. A full mark one and make the video and then I'll disassemble it and build a full 2020 mark two and make that a video so yeah that's that's coming um, it just takes a little while to get all the stuff ready for that but it's it's uh, it's coming definitely So I'm just looking at what I need to do to make to make this fit. These fans are not the same as the ones that I used while designing this. So looking at it now, I do see that I need to redesign this. This is why I test. Um, not sure if you can see it, but um, the um, actual mouth of the uh, fan is longer than what I've designed for. So I need to Yeah, so I need to make this uh, little ridge that's right here. I need to make it deeper. But that's a uh, that's a quick little fix, right? That's a 5 minute fix and a 20 minute print to make it work. For the uh, thumbnail, I'm or the, uh, the the photo that I want to post after every every stream, I'm going to put this on there without the fans. Just because I want to see how this looks. Glue gun. Yeah, that's that's an option, but I want this to be um, repeatable for everyone. Um, I don't want to have a uh, build instruction from one of my parts say to use a glue gun. It works, um, hundred percent. It works. I'm just not a. Uh... Yeah, I want to. I want to make finished parts, right? So let's just get these on, and I'll grab a M3 by. I'll grab an M3 by 8. Yeah, I like I like live stream because it makes me focus on building. The thing that I don't like about live streams is that I have to wait for every Wednesday to build this. I want to build it right now. I want to make it work. I want, I want to make it print. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a... Uh, It's an odd dilemma to have. I want to build it, but I can't because I want to show you guys. But I, I really want to show you guys. I'm not doing this because I have to. I'm doing it because I, I like to do it. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the build video or the full build tutorial for Rook and Rook 2020 are coming. Um, I do have videos, but they're not as good as I want them to be because the, let's face it, I'm I'm just starting out, right? I didn't figure out how to fade between clips instead of just cutting between clips in my videos um, until last week. 
So, yeah. Um, editing videos are is much harder than it seems. I'm, I still have a lot to learn. But the videos will be one long video with chapters and it won't just be me um, wrenching screws. It'll be me telling you putting those screws with arrows on the screen and then jump to, ne to the next part. It'll be a step-by-step -step on how to build a rook. A true step-by-step, -step, not just me rambling about. Okay, so I have my CPAP. I have my CPAP here. Uh, I need to re reprint this and I, uh, I have my CPAP here. And because I did not account for the Sherpa right here, these are too close. So I need to um, fix that. I'll make a new version of this that fixes that. Um, yeah. So let's just take this Sherpa off. I'm just too excited. I want to see how this looks. I mean, that does look pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, that looks kind of cool. And then there's plenty of room for your z-axis and your wires and if you haven't seen it the z-axis idler the new one it has a um, it has a hole in the back for a zip tie so when you put this on your frame right there uh, you can put a zip tie through and it'll hold your wires and your PTFE right uh, where it needs to go. So it's go, it's just going straight. Uh, still using flange bearings. Yes, it's still the same bill of materials as the Rook, but with extensions uh, or, or, or add-ons for the 2020. And the 2020 Mark II uses a couple more bearings. So if you have a, a kit or you have a... Um, Rook, uh, most like 99% of the parts are still being used. Hello, 3D experiments. Hello. Um, I'm just building my rook. That's all, that's all I'm doing. It's not that much exciting things. Not nothing fancy going on. Just me building. Um, yeah, but. I'm just thinking about things that I can put on this um, without having to change anything. Let's see. I need to figure out a way to get my wires to stay where they should be. And looking at this, I'm, I have an idea. I could probably use one of these. Uh, I can probably use one of these screws right here and make a uh, clip that'll hold my wires together. I've previ previously just attached them to the motor of my Z axis or my extruder. That is a way to do it. But I could make a, uh, like a point attached to these two. That'll make a nice clean way for me to hide all the wires. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna look through my, <clears throat> I'm gonna look through my parts bin. And I have these. And I've forgotten to print the uh, extra part of this. So this is my uh, spool <laughs> Toolboard, yeah, that would be uh, cool. I have 
I have an idea for a toolboard for this. Um, I could do a canned toolboard. That shouldn't be that hard. Um, I just don't have the parts available. Well, I do, but for a different build. Um, yeah, so this is my, um, my mod for a spool holder for the Rook. It attaches to there. And then Let's see. you have, this is for my Mark one that are, that's just there. Um, you have this part and you, oops, you too. So this is hard, just holding it. It clips on and there you have a spool holder. So there's, um, yeah. I just need to figure out which side I'm going to put it on. I'm, I'm tempted to just put one on each side so I can swap between sides. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put one on each side about halfway up. Uh, where's my black screws? my black screws let's see t-nuts I need t-nuts I have if you're wondering this is my screw storage so this is all different screws that I use on printers and I sometimes organize it I should organize it more often but I have a rough idea of what I have it's fine big screwdriver let's put these back Okay, so I've been streaming for how long? Two hours. Yeah. So I'm thinking I'll get these. I'll get these on, and I'm I'm just gonna end it. Uh, two or, two hours is getting close to my limit of how long I can talk to myself. And I need to get home and start working on the uh, video for next week. Let's, let's put that on. Let's just do that. I want to get these roughly the same height. So I'll put a box there. Well, Joe, if you're taking your um, Evo apart for screws, you'll have a lot of screws because that thing has all of them. <laughs> I still have mine. It's, it's, it's over there. So, yeah, it's over there. If it's one thing Evo has, it's screws. All of them. It's a great, it's a fun printer though. It's really cool. Something different. Braided sleeve and zip tie to side of triple. Yeah, so um, I have a mod for my wiring that it's a clamp that you put on. What happened? Did I just disconnect? Am I still on? We are back. Okay, good. I think my router just uh, restarted my connection. That was quick. Well, I'm glad OBS 
I'm glad OBS um, actually just did that. I, I haven't touched the computer. Good to know. I'm sorry, but not much that I can do, I guess. Just a blip, okay. Okay, I have my two arms and I'll, I need to print one of these. I, I just noticed that I've forgotten to print one. Yeah, and that'll give me a space to put a spool. I don't have a spool. But that, that's a nice little space to put a spool. If I want to, I can put it on the other side. And yeah, nice little Rook logo on the side. But yeah, that's I think that's it for today. Um, hopefully I'm gonna get that 20 tooth pulley so I can assemble the z-axis. I think that's the, the, the part that a lot of people are dreading. Uh, the belting for the top and the z-axis. So hopefully I can do that next stream. If not, I'm going to start on all of the wiring. Uh, for this it shouldn't be that hard. I want to try to make a neat looking printer so I'm going to extend a couple of wires I want to have all my wires secured to the 2020. Yeah. So that's it. I think I'm going to end the stream. That's two hours and 20 minutes. And I'm done. I want to go home. It's 1.15 a.m. So. Yeah, I hope that you uh, like the stream and want to come back next week. I'm doing one stream every Wednesday. I'm trying, trying my best to upload a video every Monday. So yeah, thanks for uh, watching. If you can hit that like button and the subscribe button, that would help me a bunch. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll see you on the Discord. And links to Funzor's uh, CNC parts are in the uh, description. So 